Autumn is harvest time. At this farm on the outskirts of Beijing, the people busy harvesting the crops aren't full-time farmers, but residents of the city. Mrs. Zhang rents a garden plot. She used to work as a chief editor at a publishing house. Since retiring, she brings her family to the outskirts of Beijing every week to tend the vegetables she's grown in her garden plot. Mr. Mi is also worried about food safety, and he has also decided to rent a plot to grow his own produce. He bought some seeds and fertilizer, and in April two years ago, he planted his garden. He grows nine kinds of vegetables, including eggplants, tomatoes, cucumbers, and chives. His garden keeps his table supplied throughout the year to October. The dense patch of cabbages, the crisp green heads of lettuce, and the ripe eggplants hanging from their vines create a bucolic picture of abundance. But digging deeper, it becomes evident that beneath this image of healthy well-being lies profound dissatisfaction with the food safety situation and heightened concern for self-preservation. In January 2011, the magazine Xiao Kang published its annual report on consumer confidence. The report recorded a series of food safety incidents from the previous year, including clenobuterol hydrochloride toxins in food, red yolks in salted duck eggs, and most notably, melamine in baby formula, all of which had, had undermined consumer confidence. It claimed that 70% of consumers had no confidence in food safety. The people interviewed for the article identified three main causes. The loss of integrity on the part of food producing and processing companies in the pursuit of profit. The light punishments imposed on those who violate the food safety regulations and weak government oversight. In April 2011, Premier Wen Jiabao, in a meeting with members of the Central Research Institute of Culture and History, told them that the dreadful food safety incidents involving melamine and baby formula, clenobuterol hydrochloride toxins in food, illegally recycled waste cooking oil, and dyed steam buns clearly showed that the decline in integrity and morals in society had reached a serious level. A country whose people do not have high quality and a moral character, he said, will not be powerful and respected. In the course of 30 years of reform, China has made the transition from basic sufficiency to moderate prosperity. In these circumstances, a series of food safety problems struck a powerful blow to the most sensitive nerve of the body politic. Two thousand and eleven should have been a year in which China's milk industry swallowed a bitter pill and put its house in order. However, on December 24th, the General Administration of Quality Supervision published the results of a random inspection of milk products. It stated that two large milk producers, one in Inner Mongolia and the other in Fujian, had each been found to have milk that contained Aspergillus flavus in excess of the required standards. This further blow to the reputation of China's milk industry made milk safety once again a topic of widespread concern. At State Farm 8511 in Heilongjiang, the older employees still call the Holstein dairy cattle they tend the general's cows, just as they did decades ago. Although much has changed over the years, today when the milk industry is in such turmoil, their memories of the general's cow's past contributions to the farm are clearer than ever.
In 1962, after three years of famine had come to an end, Chairman Mao was concerned about the people's health and the problem of supplying grain, oil, meat, eggs and milk. In a meeting with General Wang Zhen, then Minister of Land and Reclamation, Chairman Mao said, for babies to grow a little taller and all the Chinese people to be a little healthier, they should have more milk and meat. General Wang Zhen, in order to carry out the mission entrusted to him by Chairman Mao, in 1963 began transferring 750 Holstein cows to State Farm 8511. From then on, State Farm 8511 supplied all the country's major cities with milk and meat. In this way, China's dairy industry was launched. The story of General Wang Zhen and the dairy cows has become part of Heilongjiang folklore. Forty years later, the dairy industry, first established to improve the health of the country's children, had become vast and powerful. And yet, it was nearly crippled by scandal. On September 16, 2008, the CCTV Evening News program broadcast the results of a nationwide random inspection of baby formula by the General Administration of Quality Supervision. They revealed that 69 samples from 22 dairies, including San Lu and Hebei, contained melamine. At one blow, consumer confidence in China's domestic milk products was destroyed. Hordes of Chinese parents thronged to Hong Kong and Macau to stock up on baby formula, and sales of foreign name brand baby formula shot through the roof. China's domestic dairy industry was facing the prospect of extinction. How could it survive? On December 30th, 2009, exactly six months after China's law on food safety went into effect, ten ministries and commissions, including the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology and the National Development and Reform Commission, held a ceremony at the Great Hall of the People. The purpose of the ceremony was to launch a new initiative the guiding principles for building a credibility system for food industries and enterprises. Shipping公业企业诚信体系建设，就是以保障食品质量安全、促进行业可持续发展、有利人民健康为目标，以加强质量安全诚信为核心，通过政府部门协同推动行业协会自律。The Ministry of Industry and Information Technology designated the food industry and enterprises in Heilongjiang to implement the new system on a trial basis, beginning with the dairy industry. Heilongjiang省是农物业和食品工业大省，省委、省政府高度重视食品工业企业诚信体系建设试点工作，由黑龙江省工信委会同发改监察农业、工商、质检、卫生等部门。But even while the government was pushing the credibility system, it was dealt a sudden blow by the trichlorine cyanamide incident. Overnight, the public trust the industry had just won back was wiped out. 
食品企业抓诚信就是抓发展。作为企业，无论是国有的还是民营的，首先是民族的，民族品牌要发展，首先要狠抓诚信建设，关键是抓每个环节的责任落实，让诚信从源头到加工，每个生产环节的责任者都入心入脑，这样才会有消费者的信任，才会有品牌的成长和企业的发展。The key to enterprise integrity is building institutions. In early 2010, the Wonderson, Fei He, Yao Lan, and Long Dan dairy companies became the first in China to invite leading international institutions to conduct a thorough review of their management and their quality and safety measures. This resulted in the pioneering document the framework for a credibility management system for dairy enterprises. This document was divided into sections, devoted to the acquisition of raw materials, the production process, storage, production inspection, dealing with substandard products, product recall, and safety incident responsibility. It also set out a 21-point system providing the foundation for credibility management operating system and Heilongjiang's dairy industry. Officials from Wondersun Dairy have signed a contract to purchase milk from dairy farmers. The contract stipulates that the company will buy high-quality milk. The price is advantageous for the dairy farmers. So as long as they are trustworthy, raise their cows well, and supply high-quality milk, they can realistically hope to increase their incomes. Yang Shu Hui has worked as a quality inspector for the past 10 years. Every day, she travels between the dairy farms and the dairy plant. She takes samples of raw milk, tests them, and delivers the results. The work is monotonous, but she realizes she has a heavy responsibility to the dairy farmers, the consumers, and the dairy company. Our工作要求就是每日取样,每日检测,每日送检。如果出现问题,我们就可以通过奶样直接追溯到源头,查到具体的奶站,奶户,甚至是奶牛,这样就可以保证了产品质量,避免了一次充好的现象。Wonderson Dairy has several collection stations in areas where its contracted dairy farmers raise their cows. The system involves individual households tending a few cows which they bring to the station to be milked by machine. The milk is immediately put in refrigerated trucks and delivered to the plant. This clothes management system ensures that the milk is fresh and eliminates production blind spots. Heilongjiang Feihe Dairy has obtained foreign financing and sells its milk on the overseas market. It has invested 1.6 billion yuan in building four farms that can each raise 10,000 dairy cattle in an ecological setting and has imported pure Holstein cattle from Australia. It uses American and European management methods and production is fully automated. In在我们的牧场里,所有奶牛都佩戴着耳环和项圈,这两种设备其实是奶牛的电子感应识别系统,记录了奶牛的健康保健情况,产奶量、繁殖等信息。For dairy enterprises to be seen as having integrity, producing safe milk is vital. Feihe Dairy has established farming companies to grow forage grass and process roughage. It has become entirely self-sufficient in corn silage and the crude protein content of its alfalfa has reached international standards. This makes the company's milk safe and more nutritious. Feihe Dairy is creating a unique dairy production chain designed to explore the best model for developing China's dairy industry and increase its integrity. 
乳制品全产银链就是将饲草种植、饲料加工、奶牛饲养、成品生产、终端销售乃至后期服务全部纳入产业链条。企业可以从你的奶源源头开始自主掌控乳制品生产的每一个环节，全面控制奶源安全，降低风险，从而全方位推进企业诚信建设。Production management is also an important link in creating an enterprise credibility system. Wonderson Dairy has established a management system covering the entire production process, from acquiring the raw materials to delivering the finished products. The company has 1,155 standards for product quality and food safety, which may be a world record. Heilong Jiang's large dairy enterprises have imported the most advanced production and packaging facilities. Production lines are fully automated, ensuring that no secondary contamination occurs during the production process. Dairy companies have invested huge sums of money in advanced quality testing centers, which closely monitor all the indicators of fresh milk, raw materials, packaging, finished products, and semi-finished products. Fayhood Dairy's quality testing center ensures that the number of microorganisms in its milk powder is at or below 1,000. Now,老百姓都倾向于购买羊奶粉，实际上羊奶粉从制粉、运输到入关，至少要经历三四个月以上。我们黑龙江乳品企业生产的奶粉，从挤奶到检验合格出厂，只需要七天，确保了产品的新
to produce quality products, create good institutions, improve platforms and archives, train skilled personnel, pursue effective operations, and create a culture of integrity, all of which helps the perception of the industry's integrity. The existence of improvements to the system makes Heilongjiang's dairy industry more trustworthy and Chinese consumers are less cautious about buying dairy products produced in China. Thanks to this system, Chinese people's distrust of Chinese dairy products is disappearing. Although the Chinese dairy industry is still facing difficulties and serious challenges, the establishment of an enterprise credibility system encourages people to believe that national brands have a chance of reviving. On the basis of the initial progress made in establishing a system for dairy enterprises, Heilongjiang is creating a credibility system for its entire food industry, with the focus on meat, beverages, liquors, and condiments. Chengxin, 不仅让企业进一步强化了诚信文化建设，而且通过制度建设，全面提升了企业的管理水平，促进食品企业打造从草场到餐桌的全产业链，安全可追溯机制，用诚信制度保障消费者对食品安全的要求。In addition to the credibility system for food enterprises. China is also carrying out a campaign to ensure all-around multi-level food safety. Food is essential for human survival, and it is imperative to have safe food. During his tour of Tianjin in May 2011, President Hu Jintao pointed out the importance of food safety for people's health and lives. He called for the food safety law to be enforced faithfully and for efforts to be made to ensure that people had safe food to eat. At a national conference on food safety on May 15, 2011, Vice Premier Li Keqiang pointed out that it is vital to step up efforts to ensure food safety and deal seriously with major food safety incidents. The infamous lean meat powder cases in Hunan province were concluded in November 2011. Sentences were handed down on all 113 criminals involved in 58 cases, with the principal offender being given a suspended death sentence and another being sentenced to life in prison. China's industrial chain is long and has many links. The country is currently creating a food safety monitoring system that involves a clear division of responsibility. Beijing, Shanghai, Zhejiang and Guangdong have made the commitment to food safety part of the criteria for evaluating their officials. Heads of districts and counties are now held responsible for food safety locally and are expected to supervise the entire food production chain. Beijing市政府将食品安全工作列入了七县政府考核。我作为分管县长深感这个责任的重大。近年来呢，密云县委县政府不断加强食品安全的监管体系建设，构建了较为完善的食品安全组织网。信息网、监测网、配送网、监管网、无网体系和三级督察机制。我们时刻绷紧食品安全这根弦，确保让百姓吃上安全、放心的食品。Sun Huan Ping is a farmer and the owner of a steamed stuffed bun restaurant in the Chuzhou district of Huai'an in Jiangsu Province. He calls his restaurant May 17th 
in the hope that May 17th will become National Food Safety Day. Sun Huan Ping is a household name in Huai'an City. After graduating from junior secondary school at the age of 16, Sun worked in the food industry for over 20 years. He used to sell adulterated chickens and learn how to use illegal additives and preservatives to make his bean sprouts look attractive to potential customers. He knows how hydrogen peroxide solution and industrial alkali, both banned from use in food production, can improve the taste of bean curd. He also owns a dairy factory. Every time he moved into a new business, he learned more of the tricks of the trade. However, the regular occurrence of food safety incidents in recent years has convinced Sun that such unethical practices have no place in China. In April 2009, Sun bought a van and made 23 placards championing food safety. He spent over 100,000 yuan on traveling around the country to preach food safety. Over the past four years, he has been to more than 70 cities in 28 provincial level regions, covering a distance of more than 25,000 kilometers. Some people say he is mad. His wife divorced him, but he refuses to change his mind. Guaranteeing food safety is an arduous task, and China needs people like Sun Huan Ping to carry it out. It takes national institutions and public integrity to make food safe. And only if its food is safe can China be a powerful country that demands respect.